This is the story of a guy who got pulled over for doing absolutely nothing wrong except driving while stock. I had a conversation with the owner and he didn't want to be in this video, so we are going to respect his privacy. But let's look at this interaction that happened and then we're going to talk to an attorney to figure out what the real deal is and separate some of the myths from the facts. Oh man, why am I getting pulled over? Hey officer, how you doing? Doing okay. Hey, what year is this vehicle? Uh, 22. Why is it backfiring? Uh, it's, it's making noise. I know, it's how it comes stock. Really? Yeah, you can check under the hood if you'd like. Oh no, I'll just send you to the state rep and what they'll do is send you back to the factory to uh -huh. have whatever, is it in track mode? Yeah, it is. Okay, so what they're gonna do here, let me have your license. So what happens, I send you to the state rep. Uh -huh. All right, state rep for here in California. They're gonna suspend your registration. Okay. You can't drive the car, you gotta go take it to the state rep. They're gonna look at it. They're gonna send you back to the dealer. The dealer has to remove the track ops that you have to pay for. It's about $4,000. Once that's been done, you go back to the state rep to verify all the track modes have been removed. You cannot drive this on the road with the track mode. Oh, I can? No. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Well, you officer. won't be able to anymore. You've just lost this. You're going to spend about seven grand on this car right now. Go ahead and get me the registration. I don't need to look under the hood. Okay. You can't track rally motor illegal on the road. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Well, it's your money, not mine. Right, right. They tell you this at the dealer. If not, you could sue the dealer for the money. Tell okay. them you want your four or five thousand dollars back. Sure, sure. Yeah, they didn't tell me that. No, I'm sure they did. They're required by law. Oh, is that you so? You cannot operate track mode on the road. Oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't tell me that. Well, so. then I would sue them, all right, for this ticket. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have to get the insurance. Sure. Now, there's more to the story than what is in the video. Now, the first question that I have and you have, was this guy driving around like a jerk? Was he revving the engine? Was he ripping up and down the street? And he told me, no, he wasn't. He said that he pulled around a corner went under a bridge and the cop was there and started to follow him. So he was only followed for half a block before this happened. And this is a young guy. This is the first time that he got pulled over. So he was obviously a little bit nervous. So after the cop sent him on his way with virtually no discussion at all, the owner was super polite to him. He has to go to the state ref. So what is the state ref? So in California, we have something called the Bureau of Automotive Repair. It's a governmental agency and there are inspection stations that you can go to when you have been alleged to have a loud exhaust or you're alleged to have a polluting car. He goes there and there's an inspector there and he's supposed to get a certificate of compliance. And the inspector is going to test his car with a microphone to see if he meets or exceeds the 95 decibel threshold, which is what the state has set for the maximum exhaust. So the purpose is to get a certificate of compliance so that you can then take this to a judge and have your ticket dismissed. He goes to the inspector, the guy asks him, what's the loudest mode? And unfortunately, our somewhat naive owner tells the guy how to put it in N mode, which is the dynamic mode, and it's pretty loud and he tests it and he doesn't pass. It's over 95 dB, so he gets this certificate of compliance, but in fact it's marked does not comply. So he's kind of between a rock and a hard place. The next thing he does is he goes back to the dealer where he purchased the vehicle and he said, hey, I got this ticket. They're alleging that my stock exhaust is too loud. Can you inspect it? And he has the service order, this work order, and it says customer states he got stopped for modified exhaust. And there is no way to put the vehicle back to stock form because the vehicle is already stock. So at this point, our Hyundai owner is kind of between a rock and a hard place. He's got to come up with a certificate of compliance and go to the court that shows he's compliant, but he can't do that because the state ref tested the car in the loudest mode possible. And here's the thing. The state referee knew the vehicle was stock, and yet he deliberately tested it in the loudest mode possible, when I think, and everybody on social media seems to think, that he should have tested it in stock mode, in the default mode when you start up the car. And there is a test procedure from the Society of Automotive Engineers stating how to test exhaust. I wasn't able to get a license to use this and put it on screen, but my understanding is that you're supposed to test the car in the default mode when you do a ignition stop and start. Whatever the car, the mode is that the car is in after you restart it, that's the mode that you should be testing it in. Because this whole situation involves the long arm of the law, let's bring on the sports car attorney who can help us figure out 
what's fact and what's cap. This is Philip Nalud. He is a partner in a law firm in Los Angeles. And I know there's something you got to tell everybody before we get started. It's my ethical obligation to tell you guys that this is not to be considered as legal advice. I am not anyone's attorney. I'm not your attorney. And you should consult with an attorney. The views are of my own and not of my firm. I practice intellectual property primarily, but I do know this because I'm a car enthusiast. Eric has known me for years and I'm also a lawyer. Yeah, we actually have done car stuff together for many years. And, you know, you've had some cars that probably have some stock exhausts on them, probably some valved exhausts. I think that's kind of the issue here. Mm -hmm. So this poor guy has he got pulled over in Riverside County in California for an exhaust that was allegedly too loud but there's no modifications on his car at all I actually spoke with him or rather chatted with him so what law is he accused of breaking so the police officer accused him of violating California vehicle code 27150 a and 27156 b so basically what it states is that Every motor vehicle subject to registration shall at all times be equipped with an adequate muffler in uh, constant operation and properly maintained to prevent any excessive or unusual noise, and no muffler or exhaust system shall be equipped with a cutout, bypass, or similar device. He's got a stock exhaust. There's no cutout. There's no, there's, is there a bypass? Is a valve a bypass? A valve is not a bypass. A right. valve simply opens one area of the exhaust past the muffler or another. What's the intent of this law, really? Is this, is this aimed to go after manufacturers who are putting stock cars on the road? The intent of the law isn't to go after manufacturers, but it's to go after people who don't want to have a muffler or people who just want to have a straight pipe. So basically, people who want to remove their exhaust for whatever reason they want, either because they want additional sound or because they want performance benefits. So this is targeted to prevent that. Right. So this is people who basically have their rice rockets and they want to rip it up and down some neighborhood and make a lot of noise. But this mm -hmm. doesn't seem like that situation. This guy was going, according to his dash cam, 21 miles an hour. And it sounded like he was really light on the throttle. So do, don't police officers have discretion when they pull people over? Absolutely. Police officers have the most amount of discretion in the whole criminal area. So basically, the police officer didn't have to pull him over. All the police <clears throat> officer has to do is have reasonable suspicion to believe that the motorist was breaking a law. Perhaps this officer was a little bit too, too strict, but I, I wouldn't even say strict. He perhaps had a misunderstanding um, of what the proper vehicle code is, or a mis he maybe has an impoverished view of how mufflers work or how modern exhaust systems work. So he's got discretion. Could he mm -hmm. have just given the guy a verbal warning and said, hey, your car is a little bit loud. Don't drive so loud around this part of town? Absolutely. He could have just given him a verbal warning. He could have told him, turn your car to eco or normal mode. And just to, you know, be cautious, but he decided to go, um, you know, throw the book at him. He he went uh, he went full ham, I guess. On he this did guy. He... <laughs> right away, just right to the uh, right absolutely to the, the, the threats. He basically was threatening this guy with implied fines and actual fines too. This guy probably will end up having or potentially having to pay some fine because of mm -hmm. this. Um, so. This poor guy, he he bought this car brand new in January. This Elantra N from a Hyundai dealer, brand new. He hasn't modified the car. Is it possible that Hyundai has just created a car that is not compliant with California law? It's possible, but very unlikely. I would say it is extremely, extremely unlikely because a company like Hyundai would not do that. Uh, a company like that would probably have a compliance team a very sophisticated compliance team that would make sure that the car would pass California law and that it would, uh, you know, it could be registered, could be sold, it could be driven on the street in California. Otherwise, they'd be subject to a whole host of lawsuits. And I don't think they want that, especially with a car like this. I assume that before the cars come in, they're tested by CARB, they're tested by the EPA, and they have some sort of, okay, if this is a brand new car offered by a manufacturer, in their regular lineup that it there's it's implied that 
this is street legal. This is legal to use in whatever county, state, city that you purchased it in. There's really no incentive for a manufacturer to make a vehicle that doesn't comply with the law. If they have a car that doesn't comply with the law, they're going to spend a whole bunch of money basically doing recalls and defending in court and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So this poor guy, his next step is he has to go to BAR, and that's the Bureau of Automotive Repair. It's kind of a funky name. It's not really about repair. This, this uh, California entity, their job is essentially to enforce things like noise compliance and also emission uh, regulation. So this guy has to go and get a compliance certificate from BAR. What does that mean? So he has to go to a third party, but contracted by the state facility who will do an independent test of his vehicle. They're going to do a visual inspection and they're going to do a audio inspection. And they are supposed to monitor if it falls within the um, California vehicle code. So it would just be an inspector checking it out. Right. So he went there and he was charged with two things. One was the noise violation, allegedly, and the other one was pollution. So he passed the pollution part, no problem mm -hmm. that. But then the inspector asked him, what's the loudest mode? And this guy, I guess he showed him what the loudest mode was, which I think is the N mode or sport mode. I think it's N in the Elantra. Mm -hmm. The guy tested it. And it didn't pass. It came up with over 95 decibels, which is the, the threshold. And he was he was over. Does this guy have discretion? This guy does have discretion. He could have definitely tested this in normal mode or eco mode or whatever the normal mode is, because, you know, there, there could be some sort of mode where you're, you're given the option that this car can be used on track, where it could be where they could open up a different valve and have it a little louder. And I've owned cars in the past that, have blown sound at Laguna Seca, which is 103 decibels, and the, this car was completely stuck. Right. I, I would think that the reason that cars nowadays with valve exhaust have two modes is one, so that they, in the normal default mode, you can easily comply with emissions reg mm -hmm. noise regulations. And then when you got sport mode, you can let it rip if you're on the freeway or wherever. He went back to Hyundai. He went back to the dealer. He got a, a service order, which I'll throw up on the screen right now. And basically the service order says, we can't, we can't do anything to the car. We can't bring it back to stock because it already is stock. So this guy has, he's sort of between a rock and a hard place. And he's a mm -hmm. pretty young guy right now. This is the first time he's ever been pulled over. So the dealer's telling him there's nothing he can do. And by the way, he has decided to start a, a buyback process with Hyundai. He's trying to get Hyundai to buy back the car. But, you know, what are his other options here? Someone, perhaps a dealer telling him that, or a, a dealer not treating him very well. You, you and I have had experiences with dealers where the dealers, you know, they, they treat you differently depending on how you approach them. And if this is a young guy and this is his first car, they may not be giving him everything that they should be doing. But I, I think if, if it were me, I would go back to that dealer and say, look, I need a letter from you. I need some sort of letter or document, not just what he should, what they gave him that says the car stock, but off a certification of the car stock. So if he goes back to the dealer and says, flash it to the latest update, and you can show that and go back and tell them, I've redone that maybe that'll solve things. So, I mean, that's certainly a good route he could take. If he does end up going to, I guess this would be traffic court, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that's the right venue. So if he's got this letter from the dealer that says, hey, the car is stock, could he take this in front of the judge and say, nothing I can do, my car is stock? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I would love to take that to the judge. And, uh, you know, the only problem is in traffic court, you're one of 30 defendants at any given time. And the judge wants to move it move all these people from his docket extremely quickly. He doesn't want to spend half an hour of you explaining that your car's stock and, you know, this is what a valved exhaust means. I, I'm rather certain that there's only a small handful of judges that would understand what a valved exhaust is or a modern car. And most would say, what, what is this? This is a cutout. This is a bypass. It's the same thing. So it, it would be how you would have to explain exactly how valved exhausts work, what a bypass or cutout is, the intent of the law. And 
I don't think a judge is going to want to spend that much time, especially in traffic court. So I've got one more thing. This has been floating around social media quite mm -hmm. a bit. People have been saying, agreeing with the cop, the cop said, hey, track mode is illegal. You can't drive around with track mode. The dealer is obligated to notify you. You can't drive in track mode. Is that an actual law anywhere? Not that I know of. And I'd love for the cop to actually point out what law it is. And I'm rather certain that, you know, if there was any documentation in the car, it may say that this is off-road use only, but I don't see a place where a company like Hyundai would give someone the ability to make a car illegal at the push of a button. So a cop basically, he can't just make up a law and say track mode is illegal and pull you over for that. Mm -hmm, correct. And, right. you know, it might be the cop's interpretation of the law or the way he was trained, but he can't just say that. I mean, it's just like you and I pulling out um, out of thin air that, oh, you can't drive while wearing a blue t-shirt. Well, hey, any advice for this guy? What, uh, you know, I'm gonna obviously update everybody when we do have, an, uh, he gives me an update on the situation. But what, what would you wanna say to him or anybody else that's been pulled over for something like this? It's a learning experience, right? You, you kind of know where the cop is coming from or if the cop has been following you. You know, I usually turn start stop off on when uh, I know there's a cop around just so the engine shuts down around them. But if I were in this guy's situation, I'd go back to the dealer and say, look, you guys sold me this car. I haven't touched it. No one's touched it. It's not been modified. You need to help me out with this. If you don't, I've already started this process for you guys to buy, buy this back. This looks horrific for you guys in terms of publicity. You guys, there's an implied warranty of merchantability that I bought this car, it needs to be registered, it's street legal that you need to help me. If you don't want to help me, then, you know, we'll, we'll take it into lemon law. But I, I think it's go back to the dealer, get a certification that's stock, go back to another bar ref. Don't say anything, you know, when the guy says, is this the loudest mode? I don't know, perhaps. Maybe, but, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, hey, well, maybe not. You tell me, you're the referee. You're the one who should know how to use the car, right? Absolutely. Well, hey, thank you, Mr. Sports Car Lawyer, for coming on and giving your advice, or rather your opinion on this, I should say. And hopefully we'll have you on in some future episode. Let me know down below if you want to see Phil on again. Thanks for coming on. All right, thanks. Now, there's still a little bit more to this story. The owner has decided to go to Hyundai and try to get Hyundai to buy back the car. Now, he wasn't successful on his first attempt, but apparently it's been escalated within Hyundai and he hasn't heard back yet. So that's his path. However, at the end of the day, he's still gonna have to go before a judge and either show that the car is compliant or show that it was stock and have the judge dismiss it. So either way, he's gonna end up in front of a judge and this sucks for him. It's gonna cost him probably a little bit of money and court fees, but the judge is able to waive that. If there are more updates to the story after this video, I'm gonna post another one. Subscribe if you like this kind of content. My name is Eric. Thanks for watching.